All for that one image. All for that one cut. You are always taking on challenges. You long to create something you haven't yet seen. To make your imagination a reality. We believe in your creativity. The limitless potential of each and every one of you. Our mission is to support that creativity, which is why we continue to innovate, to listen to our customers, to not only meet their expectations, but to consistently exceed them. A devotion to speed, to capturing the fleeting moment. to astonishing image quality, to projecting images beyond that of the human eye, meeting professional demands and achieving cinematic expression. We strive to continue being the challenger, challenging ourselves to support your unceasing creativity. Through that creativity, we can see an exciting future. Working together to create images that go beyond imagination. Today, let us introduce a step Today, toward the new us future. The One. Unprecedented resolution and speed. Alpha one. Right, hi guys. So, um, previous video, obviously, the announcements I was talking about, obviously, are not necessarily correct in this moment in time. But day one, this thing looks absolutely incredible. I have pre-ordered it, so watch this space. There will be one coming this way soon, as soon as I can get one. But it looks like they've lowered the resolution, obviously, to help with noise and grain and things like that. But also the fact that they've got, obviously, an, this is a newer sensor, 30 frames per second stills. That's bonkers. I thought 24 frames per second on the RX-10 Mark IV was bonkers. So likelihood of missing anything nowadays is actually going to be absolutely incredible. So it looks like Sony have literally just pushed the boundaries and gone right. So if anybody knows the Koenigsegg, one to one as it was the perfect one to one ratio sony have almost made the same sort of situation with a camera so the one does pretty much everything very 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 well apparently so this is crazy the specs on it are pretty much bang on i know there's some people still going to be moaning about it can't do this it can't do that but you know end of the day if you use it as a tool and you can get the job done more efficiently is paid paid for itself very quickly you know these shots here obviously you can still crop in quite nicely i don't know what the crop factor would be because the a7r4 is 26 megapixels in aps-c mode um but you know 15 stops dynamic range that's kind of normal for today it's yeah just the general specs the fact that we're going to have lower noise issues which is great because obviously the a7r4 can suffer a little bit of grain due to its high megapixels but now obviously they've improved the uh the way noise and everything is, is dealt with this here having the 30 frames per second really really does make a difference it's basically an a9 on steroids so they've literally merged 
an A7R4 and an A92, for example, together, and then tweaked it and remapped it and made it bonkers. Faster focusing. So I think the A9, or at least the A9 did 60 calculations per second. This is doing twice as much. And now they've, um, you know, got that working. The high resolution EVF as well, which is awesome. So yeah, 120 frames per second AF calculation. So where the A9 was 60, I believe. I have to double check on that, but I think that's what it was. So, you know, absolutely mad. So, you know, really, really makes a difference in capturing moving subjects quickly, um, you know, and keeping you, you know, in focus, especially if you're shooting wide open, say on a 135G Master or something, you know, you're more likely to get a really, really good sharp shot still. Yeah, the blackout thing, I'd never really find that a bit of an issue, really, to be honest, but I suppose if it's not there, it's not there. You know, that's the way it is, you know. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> but it's never really bothered me that much. Yeah, this is a different game changer. So where the A7R4 was a bit of a game changer with its resolution and its viewfinder, this is again another 4,000 or 4 million pixels up. Something like that. I think it was 5.9 uh, million pixels per in the previous uh, generation EVF, and obviously 40, uh, 240 FPS, which is obviously going to help with your fast burst rates and things like that, and also the autofocus and things. You know, it allows you to see everything clearly, very smoothly, which is which is awesome. Absolutely bonkers. I'm actually blown away by it, to be honest, guys. I don't know if anybody else is. It's almost like Sony said five years ago when no one else was doing mirrorless. Sony said, "Oh, mirrorless is the way forward," and everyone's going, "Nah, nah, nah, nah." And, you know, they Sony sort of stopped five years down the line for a bit, let everyone catch up a bit. And they've just been watching them, wondering what others are doing, I suppose. And uh, they've said, right, back to work, guys. And boom, you get this. So, you know, yep, I do love Sony, but I also appreciate and do love Canon, Nikon, and all the other companies out there that actually are pushing for other companies to improve on their technologies and you know when you've got sony who are a massive innovator yet they've got huge budgets so they probably can afford to do things like this with ease um you know so yeah it's absolutely brilliant the fact that they're still pushing but i mean i can't see myself needing a camera better than this in the next 10 years so you know what else can they do <laughs> absolutely bonkers so, yeah, I mean, it's a very expensive camera, six and a half thousand pounds, or six thousand five hundred dollars. But what it can actually do, they've basically eradicated all of the little problems that one of the one of the cameras in the range will have. And as a professional user, it's going to allow you to. You know, have the shots better than better and better than anybody else. So I guess it's a win win situation. You know they've got the uh, the faster memory cards in there as well, so I don't know what the buffer's like, or anything like that. I have no idea. Apparently, it will take normal SD cards as well as the new ones, so you still have, a, you know, you can still utilize your cards you still have, which is good because I've still got some. So depending on what you're doing, so if I'm shooting 8K video, for example, you know, you'd use the faster cards. But if you're just taking out, you know, taking photos or whatever, doing a photo shoot, you might not need to necessarily have to worry. So. It all depends on what you're doing, is what memory you actually need in it. But the fact you've got silent shooting, anti-distortion shutter with electronic shutter, anti-flicker shooting, so basically, um, oh, with mechanical and electronic shutter, flash with electronic shutter, that's awesome. So we now have flash in silent mode, I believe, if that sounds right. Um, an autofocus that is now just blown everything away, possibly. I don't know. Until it's compared to against another camera make or whatever. But I always think, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, this might be better than the Canon R5, for example. Or the R5 might be better than this. If you buy it and you own the lenses that fit it and, and you utilise it, that's the best camera you've got. So you make the most of it. You can learn how to use it properly. And the, verse, the person who owns the other make is going to do exactly the same. So in the real world, it doesn't really matter. It's just a case of most, you know, utilising what you've got and benefiting you know and utilizing the the knowledge you have of that camera to get the most out of it so 
the fact that they've improved the eye autofocus now for birds, which is pretty cool. So that'd be interesting to see. What's what? Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, this is bonkers. I mean, I'm still, literally, I'm just gobsmacked by the, the specs of this thing. Absolutely gobsmacked. But like I say, it's a lot of money, but this is something that's going to last you a good few years to, to use. And, you know, I remember 2006, I believe, I walked into a camera shop and I spoke to a guy called Chris, who my dad knew, who owned a shop. And he basically, I was basically Nikon. Was it 2006? 2005, 2006. And he said, what do you want? And I said, well, I'm going to go to digital from, from Nikon film to digital. And I said, what do you recommend? Shall I stay Nikon? He said, no. I went, okay. He said, go Konica Minolta. And I went, what? Okay. He said, go Konica Minolta because they're Sony, uh, selling to Sony. And apparently there's going to be big things in the future. And I went that way. I trusted his uh, a judgment. So thank you very much, Chris. Trusted his judgment. And he he wasn't wrong. He well, I say for years, probably for the first five years of using Sony, um, when I upgraded from the Konica Minolta into the Sony range, so I went like A700 into the A900, um, eventually A99, I also had an A77, uh, and then into the mirrorless. For quite a few years, everyone used to take the piss. Oh, you know, using Sony, they're shit, they're just a joke, blah, blah, blah. Um, compared to Nikon and Canon, I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. I'm still getting the shots, I know. And amid admittedly, yeah, the build quality wasn't quite up to the, the Canons or the Nikons and some of the functionality wasn't quite there. And, you know, I kind of persevered and I've, I've sort of worked my way through certain different makes, so, you know, a couple of years out of each camera upgrade when they bring a new one out or whatever. Um, mainly I do that because your previous camera still got some value. And obviously I'm using it enough to warrant, you know, the upgrade. Obviously, if you're an amateur and you only take a few pictures a week or you only put the camera up every now and again, you know, it's not necessarily worth the upgrade. But if you're utilizing the camera daily, week, you know, all the time and, you know, utilizing it for work and everything like that, it's going to pay for itself. So, you know, the upgrades are well worthwhile as long as you've got the knowledge to use the cameras properly. If you're still shooting in auto, this camera is a complete waste of money, in my, my opinion. Yeah, you can use the auto, use the auto features. But if you if you're someone who's using it in fully auto all the time, as in auto everything, I, I you know you're not going to get the benefits from the camera. So you know this camera is end of the day Sony's first real 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 top pro camera. You know it's expensive. So I think if you can make the most of it, if you can earn the money from it, it's worthwhile an investment. So you know personally. If I wasn't earning money from it and I didn't have the YouTube channel and I didn't, you know, utilize cameras daily, I probably wouldn't have bought this. I probably would have stayed with the A7R4, even the A7R3, personally. But because I'm what I'm doing nowadays, it's going to be a worthwhile investment. Especially now this active um, stabilization, you know, it's quite handy to have and actually gives you a really good image stabilization without a gimbal. So even though I have a gimbal now, um, it's still going to give you the options of smoother footage, things like that. So you know what a, what a bit of kit so yeah um let me know what your opinions are of this camera and i imagine a lot of people already watched the the video with sound and everything obviously i just ditched the sound off it so you know i could talk about it and you know the fact that it's got all of the interface systems and everything they have done i mean the multi hot shoe with the interface connections on it you know nick i remember nikon users taking this why have you got stupid little connections on there well so you can plug stuff in and nothing really came out for it for a few years but now, obviously, you've got a plug-in microphone. Boom, straight on. No extra wires, no nothing. You know, things like that um, work really, really nicely. But the fact, the specs of this, I mean, you just got to look at it. You know, most people aren't even going to make most of it. I don't even know if I'd ever shoot for 8K. <laughs> I mean, the 8K thing is really handy for cropping in. So, obviously, you can crop into 4K or even 1080p if you really wanted to. You know, that's mad. Um, you know, so with the new shutter mechanism in there as well, you know, obviously this this thing, the one, um, yeah. I mean, the fact it's high reli high reliability, so hopefully it's been tested heavily. Um, but I'm hoping that they give the 
the four year uh, warranty as well, at least like I have had with the A7R4, A7R3 and A7R2. I might have even had it with the A900 or even the A99. I've always had, if you pre-order, especially in, in the UK, um, if you pre-order the cameras in, in advance, you do get the extended warranty, which is worth its weight in gold, to be honest. Because if it does go wrong, you just send it in. You don't have to pay anything. And they either give you a new camera or they repair it. Most of the time, they just repair it. But, you know, it's one of those things. Um, and in the UK, we've got a really good service. There's a place in Wales that I've used a few times where I've dropped cameras, smashed the lenses off and smashed the shutter and and broken the rear screen and things like that and they've repaired it and it's normally a fixed price anyway so it's not that bad if um you know need if you do need repairs um with the wi-fi system it looks like you know that's gonna be really quite handy i, I mean i've utilized the wireless system on the a7r4 that works quite well um with a faster data rate 10 gigabytes per second um you know you're kind of like you know it's awesome um you know, wireless monitor stat on top of your, on top of the hot shoe for video. Don't even have to plug it in. You can actually get the remote screen from it. I mean, I, I utilize that with my phone quite often. Use it as a screen. So that works quite well. So, you know, if it's all improvements, it's going to be a, a well worth thing. I'm not sure what a light JPEG is. I guess that's a small JPEG. I'm not really sure. There was no real description of that. In-camera crop. Um, not really sure on that either without looking there's a few things they didn't really talk about too much I just said oh they've got this that and the other still looking at the screen does it actually fold out like the a7s3 I'd imagine so even though in the diagram where they were showing about the cooling it had the, the traditional old fold out screen so don't really know on that there's a few little bits of uh, interesting changes there lossless compressed roars that's awesome. So smaller roars means you keep your probably keep your 30 frames per second up for longer if you're shooting bursts. Um, Hyph. Wasn't really too sure about that, but it's probably something I won't necessarily go into. Image egg, image in egg, oh, I can't speak. Imaging Edge desktop app I actually use quite a bit, which is really quite cool. Um, but yeah, utilizing the new Sony cam on this new Sony phone, which I haven't got. I use the iPhone. Um, but it means you can connect and send images directly straight to your phone via USB or via Wi-Fi. Very handy and hopefully it's really quick. Like I say, you can also send it if you're like, imagine if you're working on a football pitch and you're photographing all the players, you can literally send it straight to you, send it to your phone straight away and it's already, at, you know, emailed or whatever or transferred to a um, somewhere to actually be used within seconds. Really, really good. But there's probably other cameras out there that can do this. I don't know what other what are the other cameras out there can do necessarily. That's really cool. 4K monitoring and live streaming with it. Xperia Pro via HDMI. That's cool. So we, sh we could do live streaming straight through the camera, possibly to like live Facebook or something like that. Something like, you know, as an example, or like say YouTube. That's really quite cool. Really, really cool. So you get the depth of field and everything that you would do depending on what lens you've got. You know, even talking about stuff, you know, utilising the 100 to 400 G Master or something. Absolutely bonkers. But it looks like they've kept it at a sensible megapixel. So 60 is very good. I mean, the, the sharpness of the images that get out of that A7R4 are incredible. But the, you know, this A1 with 50, they've dropped it down. So obviously the photo sites are bigger. And it's slightly, obviously, but it still gives you better low light performance, I'd imagine. But obviously, new sensor, new technology coming through all the time. You've only got to look at the iPhone, you know, iPhone 12, probably the other phone cameras out there as well, how much better they are in low light and things like that straight away. So the fact that we've got slow motion built in, I've kind of not really worried about an RX10 Mark V now. It depends, but the technology they've just stuffed in this makes you wonder what they are going to bring out really does but i think for a lot of people this camera is the one <laughs> going by the name and you know for me personally that does way more than i need it to in the real world yes i can utilize pretty much all of the connections probably won't need the wireless stuff so much um but possibly videoing 8k 
down to 4K. And obviously the slow motion stuff's really handy to have. Very, very cool bit of kit. Um, and it's a tool. It is literally made to be a tool. So, you know, that's what it's designed to be. It's designed to be used day in, day out, bashed about a bit. So, you know, if it lasts and it's reliable, doesn't go wrong, um, can't moan. Still quite small, which is good. Small and light. I've noticed that with my bags over the years, my, my pro bag now I use isn't that big compared to the massive rucksack I used to have years ago with all the camera gear I used to carry around to try and get the job done. Now I'm carrying less gear, see less weight, which is awesome. And you know, it just works amazingly. So yeah, big, big thumbs up for me. I don't know what you think, guys. Um, yeah, absolutely mad. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I'm still blown away by the, the specs on it. A lot of the specs are more interested in the others, like the eye autofocus has been improved, the autofocus speed's been improved, obviously image quality's been improved, which I didn't think was really possible. But hey ho, um, you know, and a few other things like obviously the 30 frames per second bursts. Different world. Different world. So yeah, massive, massive thumbs up, Sony. Really, really cool. So yeah, we're interested to see what else they bring out in this, this year, if they do. The fact it's got the same form factor as well is awesome so i know you'll know the camera inside and out by you know carrying on i don't know if it's actually got a fully you know controllable touch screen if you can you know push buttons and stuff on the screen yet not really sure about that to be honest it doesn't really bother me at all because once i've been into the main menu and set the camera up i'm very rarely in there anyway and also um you know it doesn't matter you know most of the time you've got the controllable button so when you've got your face up to the camera and you're looking through the viewfinder you can adjust everything you need to do without even coming away from the camera so touch screens yeah not that bothered about that at all but i know some people would be moaning if it hasn't so anyway uh, no not everyone's happy about the situation i'm sure but i'm sure there's other things that they probably don't like um, but you know what's perfect out there you know this this is um pretty perfect in my eyes it does pretty much everything i need it to plus more so you know apps yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go anymore. I could keep talking and talking about it. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Little notification bell as well. But obviously, leave some comments below about what you think of this thing. See you soon, guys. And don't forget to click that subscribe button, the little notification bell once again. And thanks for watching.